please go. go. Welcome everyone uh, to the SIAM FME seminar. Today we have the pleasure of having Ibrahim Ekren as our speaker. As many of you know, he did his PhD at USC under the direction of uh, John Feng. Uh, you may recall his early work on uh, past dependent PDs. After that, he went to Michigan for postdoc and now he's in the Sunshine State. Maybe that's a statement about winter in Michigan, I'm not sure. In either event, he will talk about optimal transport and risk aversion in Kyle's model of informed trading. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Marcel. Thank you for the introduction and thank you to Igor and the organizer for uh, inviting me. Uh, so this is a joint work with uh, Kerry Beck, Francois Kokma and Abraham Liu. Uh, so it had several lives and what I'm gonna present to you is the uh, is the latest version, which is always, which I mean, which is the final version and which is already submitted. Uh, so uh, let's start. Uh, so, I mean, I will first um, introduce the model and I will mention at the beginning, some of the contributions that we make. Uh, I will mention the literature uh, on this field after introducing the model. And I will present to you two models. Uh, two problems which are related to each other. First model is the risk-neutral risk market maker case. And the second one is the risk-averse market maker case. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I will mention some examples. So here we go. Uh, if you have any questions, I mean, I think they can type it and I leave Marcel the choice of interrupting or not, depending on whether it is... Uh, uh, a relevant question or not. Oh, I mean, it, 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 it is a question that can wait or not. not. It's not about the relevance. So I will mention the contributions of the paper. Uh, first in finance, the objective is to understand the consequences of uh, long lived asymmetric information on price formation. I mean, this is why Kyle's model uh, exists. Okay. Uh, in our model, we will have uh, two agents, three agents, but two are important. There will be an agent with superior information who is facing an adverse selection from her trades. And there will be an agent with inferior information who has to manage her inventory optimally because uh, he will have uh, inventory risk. Uh, in equilibrium, the price processes will be mean reverting on the physical measure. And then they will be marketing along the risk control measure. And then the important thing that uh, Kyle, what that Kyle model gives is that uh, the pricing rule of the market makers in this model, the, the agent with inferior information, will provide a relation between trading volumes, implied volatility, risk premium, and prices. So that is what, uh, in fact, what Kyle, mod Kyle model do. So in terms of mathematics, uh, we establish a new connection between optimal transport theory and information asymmetry. Okay. So if you, there are many applications of uh, optimal transport, but if you look at those applications, what you will realize is that there are some distribution constraints that are exogenously given. Okay, so there are some reasons why uh, uh, the transport maps uh, have to satisfy this distribution, distribution constraints. Okay, so what you will see is that, but if you look at Kyle's model, this is something that you don't see. In fact, uh, these distribution constraints uh, appears because of interaction of agents, in particular because of what is called inconspicuous trading of agents. Inconspicuous trading means that uh, the trade of the insider cannot be predicted by the market maker, yeah, not in a stochastic analysis uh, uh, sense, but uh, its expectation is zero. So this cons uh, puts cons distributional constraints on the pricing rules. And what you realize is that at the end, pricing rules has to be transport maps. And we'll see that Mosh Kantorovich duality yields to representation of profits of agents. And then uh, we will see also that one important thing at the end, if the risk neutral distribution of assets is given, you can directly construct an equilibrium in this framework without relying on a fixed point. So I will come back to all those things. And the important quantities at the end appears to be the risk neutral distribution of quant uh, I mean, prices. So let me present asymmetric information. So I mean, uh, what we envision is that uh, we have an informed trader. So it doesn't have to, we call, it, we call her insider. 
but it doesn't have to be an insider. It can be someone who is super smart, who made more analysis than other people, and but who has some superior information. In this case, let's say that she knows that the price will hit 2000 in one year. So she will want to make a most profit from her information. So she needs to take into account the price impact. So this is adverse selection that I mentioned. When she trades, the prices change and she has to optimally trade. Uh, and in particular, she cannot just directly inject all her information in the market because it will be suboptimal. Also in the model that we uh, discuss, uh, we will, she can trade in stock and options, okay? So uh, this is something uh, we can do, which couldn't have been done in the previous Kyle models. So why stock and options? So I mean, stock markets and op option markets are different. So stock markets are uh, more liquid, okay? Uh, whereas option markets are less liquid. So she can hide herself better in stock market. But on the contrary, there is no leverage in stock market. She could play on the leverage uh, in options market. And also she could play on the choice of the strike. So I will not get into the details of how she should play on the choice of the strike. And I will focus on, on the, for this presentation on one strike, but the model can be done in many, for many number of, for any number of uh, options or stocks. Uh, you can look into the paper for that. And then there are some nonlinearities of the pairs that have been with options. Okay, so in terms of Kai's model, I mean, let me just really present Kai's model with one stock and one option. So, okay, we have an option market, we have a stock market. And then in this market, there are three participants, insider, noise trader, and market maker. Market may, uh, and then there is a price, fundamental, that what I will call fundamental price, V tilde S, that will be announced at the end of the time. And the market maker has a belief on this price. Uh, he doesn't know this price, whereas the insider knows this price, okay? And she can trade on this information. So she knows the, uh, the actual value of the fundamental price. And then the third participant is the noise trader. Okay, so there's a bunch of noise traders that trade because of some exogenous needs, needs and they trade according to some Brownian motion, which is correlated. Okay, and Francois made a good job on drawing these curves. Yes, you see the stock uh, trading curve is thicker than the option trading curve because there is more liquidity usually on stocks compared to options. Okay. And then what happens here is that, uh, so everybody, uh, an insider and noise trader passes orders in option and stock markets. Uh, the orders are combined and the market make, and uh, we, we, we denote Y the sums of those orders and the market maker can only see this Y and he cannot see which uh, order is coming from who, okay? He can distinguish between options and stocks, but he cannot distinguish between insider and noise trader. And so he needs to filter. And then after this is filtering problem, he will spit out a price, which will be the rational price of the asset. So let me write everything down to, to, to write down and you see what the quantity is. So we fix the option with strike K. We fix the maturity to time T. Interest rate is zero. And as I described, we have our three agents. Well, uh, insider learns the fundamental value at time zero and the fundamental at time zero, he learns the fundamental value that will be at time T, okay? Her position is XT. Uh, uninformed noise trader are trading according to a correlated Brownian motion, okay? And then the market maker observes Y, which is equal to X plus Z without being able to disentangle them. These are all two dimensional processes. And she needs to price based on her observation of Y and her belief on the price. And I'm gonna denote one quantity which is relevant, which is the total payoff, I mean, not the total, but vector payoff of stock and option, which is this random variable. I will denote by F, it is singular measure on R2. Okay, so we will find an equilibrium and this equilibrium, what, what it needs to satisfy is that, well, it will be a pair of X star and P star. If, okay, X star needs to be adapted to the information insider and then P star has to be, H star needs to be adapted to, the, I mean, H. The price needs to be adapted to the information of the market maker and we will see that it will be Markov function of, the, of, of Y. And then, so the condition of equilibrium is that if the market maker uses this pricing rule, then X star is an optimizer of this, okay? Given her information. And then uh, in the other direction, if the insider uses the strategy X star, the price will be rational in the sense that it will be the conditional expectation of the fine fundamental value, okay? So review of literature. So in terms of literature, so uh, the seminal paper is by Kyle. There is one stock and uh, 
the, the, the belief on the price is Gaussian. So it becomes a linear quadratic problem in this case. And Kyle, in fact, shows that uh, there is a linear equilibrium. But uh, Gaussian price is bad because it can become negative. And the big contribution is, after that is, is by Kerry, who shows that, uh, who showed that uh, you can take a, a disbelief absolutely continuous. And he uses an HJB equation to characterize the equilibrium. But you will, if you look carefully into his paper, you, you will see that the final condition of this HJB equation is not a priori fix. And then what we'll show is that this final condition can be identified as an optimal transport mode. Okay. Uh, Kerry also has a paper from uh, 1993 uh, for the case that I mentioned, but uh, he doesn't fully solve it. He has good insights about the redundancies of assets and market completeness in Kyle's model with option. But he actually has to assume a very particular structure of correlation of uh, trading to be able to solve it. And then essentially what he does is that he sets up the problem so that he can compute an optimal transport map explicitly. But it is very, 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 very particular. And when we started this project, we considered this problem still as being open. And, and so and now we know how to solve it. Uh, and then uh, there are, uh, in the last few years, there have been, I think, two main contributions in the, in the field, two, three. Uh, the paper of Umut Chetin and Albina Danilova, and a paper from uh, Ying from 2020, where, as I will show, the market makers uh, can be uh, risk averse. And then there is also a paper by Colin de Ferran Foss, where essentially, let me go back to here, this sigma can be a stochastic process. Okay, so these are the big contributions recently. And then I put some names uh, and yeah. And then one, my main criticism about most of those papers is that uh, you need some something, uh, you need to know something about the uh, expected utility or expected wealth of the insider. So there is something uh, they use, they usually use AJB arguments. They need to be able to say something before uh, on this AJB, uh, on the solution of this AJB equation. And uh, so essentially something needs to be close to be solved, solved except, uh, except the paper of Umut, by the way. So, uh, so what is the challenges if you want to establish an equilibrium? So the challenge- uh, is Extremely, Ibrahim, can I ask a question? Yes. So, you know, in the, in the game, so usually we talk about a closed loop or open loop or continuous, et cetera. And here it's more subtle. So when you say the equilibrium fix X star, so it's in closed loop sense or open loop sense or, or, uh, or in, in what sense? Fix it is, X it, star. It, uh, so here it will be closed loop sense. So assume that, assume that this thing is given as a map of the V tilde, v tilde and Y. Okay, okay. Yeah. It is closed okay. loop Thank on you. Y. So I, I wrote here Z because from the perspective of the market maker, it's the same consideration, but you are right. It will be better to write Y here. It will be a mapping of V tilde and Y. Okay, okay. Thank you. It is closed loop. In the, and then he will inject it in the filtering problem to get this one. To price on it. That is, that's how it works. Yes, that's a, that's actually right. That's the, that's the appropriate filtration. They are the same, but I, uh, you're right that it should be said in this way. And so if uh, so, he doesn't control only X. So this is, a, I mean, what is being controlled is Y here. Insider control, uh, the control of the insider is X. Z is the noise. So he is not only controlling X. He is also controlling the belief of the market maker in some sense. So you need to set up your equilibrium so that both optimization and filtering works together. Uh, in Gaussian framework, Kalman filter does this and it works. And so our main insight to find an equilibrium is to say that, okay, we have two spaces. The space of Y, the order flows, the order imbalances uh, and trades and the space of prices, okay? What we're gonna do is that we are gonna keep everything linear on this space Y, okay? Gaussian linear space. And then we are gonna go between prices and volumes with uh, optimal transport maps, okay? And the main thing is that optimal transport map, as many of you knows, are increasing. So the prices will be increasing in Y, which is something that you want. So let me now describe the risk neutral market maker problem. And we are gonna solve it by using this uh, famous result on optimal transport. By the way, since Marcel is here, I think I should say it clearly that this is not Martingale optimal transport. This is regular optimal transport. Okay, so fix two distribution in Rn. So I'm putting R2 because we are in this case, but it is true for any dimension. The first one is absolutely continuous. Okay, then there exists a unique convex map whose gradient pushes the first measure to the second measure. And then if the second one is also absolutely continuous, then the convex conjugate is the inverse of the, inverse of the transport map. 
and then it will go from the other direction. So uh, from mu to mu, okay? Uh, so it is known that I, will, I, I wrote two, but there are three main properties that uh, are nice of this thing. So uh, two pro, two, the, this gradient is the minimizer of the optimal transport problem. This is really Monge problem, okay? It transports mu to mu by minimizing a cost. This is Monge problem. The function gamma, is, I, I will call it uh, Brownian potential or Kantorovich potentials, uh, is the solution of the Manjamper equation. So it is the unique convex solution to this equation. And the third one, uh, gamma and gamma, uh, gamma convex conjugate are the dual, uh, dual optimizers, okay? So let me, let me look at how this thing work in Kyle's model, in Kyle model. So we will have a, a Gaussian distribution. So it is the distribution of ZT. So the noise trading, the, the, the value of the noise trading at final time. This is a Gaussian distribution. And then on the other side, I have a joint distribution for stock and price, which depends on the belief of the market maker. And then, so Brownian theorem, there exists a map that goes from one to another. Okay, and so uh, well, it is fun. <laughs> this is the gamma. <laughs> there exists a gamma convex whose gradient is uh, well, is the map. <laughs> it, push, it pushes, and it is an optimizer, and it is. Yeah. So I want to mention one more structure of this map. The structure of this map is that in we have actually proof of this in some cases. Uh, there will be a curve here that splits the volume space in the two. If you are under this curve, the option will realize out of the money. If you are over this curve, the option will realize in the money. So there is this structure and I'm gonna come back to the structure. But this object exists by general consideration of optimal transport. Let me define the equilibrium pricing rule. Equilibrium pricing rule, solve the heat equation whose final condition is this optimal transport. Map. Okay, so by the way, how does this go? Do you see this bar? How can I make it go? Okay. I will continue. okay, so so this is the equilibrium uh, pricing rule. Let me mention the equilibrium uh, strategy of the insider. Well, equilibrium uh, strategy of the insider for Jian Fan, this is the strategy. So he will use an absolutely continuous strategy who is given by this. And if you know a little bit of Brownian bridge, this is in fact the drift of a Brownian bridge. Okay, why will be a Brownian bridge for the insider? And from the perspective of the market maker, why will be a Brownian motion? Okay, so, and then the main theorem is that the couple H star X star forms an equilibrium. Okay, and then, so I wanna mention three, four things that here. So this theorem relates several important quantities on optimal transport with several important quantities in finance. The quantities are transport maps. So I say that transport maps from volume to prices is the pricing rule. And then transport map from prices to volumes is the strategy of the insider. The potentials, okay? The potential evaluated at the information of the insider is the conditional expected profit of the insider. And it's expectation, if you normalize it properly, there's a normalization that I, I, I don't mention. It is in fact related to Wasserstein two distance of the two distribution that I mentioned above, okay? So uh, this is the main theorem in terms of uh, relations of optimal transport with uh, Kyle model. Any questions here? And so one more thing here. So I put this one on between uh, uh, commas or brackets because there is a small technicality here that I just want to mention. Here you are in a one dimensional uh, subset. Okay, if you learn a price, it will be difficult for you to go back. The transport map in this case that is not well defined. You need to use a small uh, randomization, small mixing for the insider, but it is a small technicality that is mentioned in the paper. And so what are the properties of the equilibrium? So what we do is that we only filter in a Gaussian space. We constructed the problem so that we only filter in a Gaussian space. So you can prove everything with Kalman filter and basic stochastic analysis. All the nonlinearity is hidden in the Brownian map and a computation of the Brownian map will become actually a main topic. And it is challenging, so, but it exists. So Brownian 1992, it exists. H star and it is derivatives provide the dependence of the prices of all asset and volatilities. And it gives the cross price impact, for example. And then also we can obtain the belief of the market maker uh, on the fundamental price as a push forward measure of some Gaussian measure that comes from common filter. Okay, 
Uh, and I want to mention one more result that will allow us to go further. So between one more relation between optimal transport and Kyle model. We can in fact show that any finite variation strategy of the insider ensuring this equality is optimal. And at equilibrium, the realized profit of the market maker can be written again using the potentials. Okay, so realized profit. So the realized profit, it is very important. Uh, we will, this will allow us to in fact make the market maker risk covers. So let's continue now. So let's pass to the risk covers market maker case. Okay. Uh, so now what we want to do is we want to understand. So in, in the previous mod, uh, model that I mentioned, when I say risk our risk neutral market uh, market, it is the pricing rule. What we say is that this price process PT is martingale. So in the filtration of the market maker, basically market makers are coating, okay, martingales all the time from their perspective. And what happens will that they will have zero profit. So they, they'll, the expected profit is zero. Okay, that is why it is called risk neutral market maker. You can write it as a control problem from a perspective of the representative market maker and show that this will in fact ensure that the representative market maker has zero expected profit. Now, what we are gonna do is, we're gonna do risk averse market maker, which will allow us to look at the physical distribution of prices versus the risk neutral distribution of prices. Okay, so in order to understand the relation between risk premium and option prices, we assume that the market maker has exponential utility. Okay, where uh, this is the profit of the market maker when the pricing rules H is used and if Y is given as, this is Y, it has realized like this. And I gave you an expression for this in equilibrium. And so, so now what we want to do is we want to find an equilibrium where, so an equilibrium again, it's a pair H star X star, X star, where if the market maker uses the strategy H star TYT, then X star maximizes the expected profit. So the insider is still a profit maximizer. And then now we're gonna say is that from the other side of the problem for the price single, we will say that the price will not be a martingale under P. It will be a martingale under Q, okay? And now you need to make the link between Q and P. You need to in fact say, what is Q? What is this risk neutral measure? So we're gonna say is that risk neutral measure is defined by evaluating the utility of the uh, market maker at uh, the wealth of the representative market maker, at, at the market maker, if you want. So I will explain you why this is a, a good definition of equilibrium, why this is a good definition of risk neutral distribution. So for people who in finance, it is more natural. Uh, it is used in uh, intermediate asset pricing, and I, I'm, I'm thinking in other fields too. It is also similar to what we did with uh, Johannes Müller Carby and Peter Bank a couple of years ago. And so this condition of this condition of this this way of postulating the risk neutral measure is in fact uh, equivalent to this first order optimality condition. So you are maximizing in Y. Y is here, okay? And you take at H X you, you take the price as given. So this way of postulating the risk neutral measure means that we will pinpoint a pricing rule and a trading strategy so that if we have a representative price taking market maker, she will clear the market by also trading optimally. Okay, we are finding a X star and H star so that also, I mean, if the market maker is neglecting her impact on the price, she will accept to trade uh, against the uh, Y uh, at, I mean, yeah, at this price H star, okay? So this is different than the definition of Umut and Albina uh, where they, they assume a zero profit condition, okay? Zero utility gain condition. They assume that uh, the utility evaluated at the wealth of the market maker is uh, a martingale. Ours is more in line with the literature and allows the market maker to, in fact, uh, make a trade off between risk and profit. Okay. Uh, so let's construct an equilibrium here. And if you want to construct an equilibrium here, 
what will happen is that uh, at first, I mean, if I tell you construct an equilibrium, what you will be take, what you will be taking as given, it will be the physical distribution uh, of the fundamental price. Okay, you will say, okay, what is my data? Your data, at first you might think that your data is the physical distribution of the fundamental price. Okay, but if you do that, it will be difficult. Like establishing an equilibrium becomes difficult because essentially you need to go through a fixed point argument, which wouldn't be very far from what uh, they did in Chetin Danilova. But, but what I wanna tell you is that you shouldn't start with the physical distributions. What I wanna say is that you should start with the risk neutral distribution as being given. Okay, you should take the risk neutral distribution of the price as given, fundamental price. And, and it is some, something more natural in asset pricing. And also in this context, uh, we can discuss why <laughs> later, but I don't wanna lose more time. Uh, you should say that what you have in hand is the risk neutral distribution of the fundamental price. And also, if you look at the option prices, that is what you will be getting in your hand, okay? And also, I mean, my last argument in this direction is Black-Scholes. When you are studying Black-Scholes, when you are, I mean, the definition even of Black-Scholes is to postulate that the risk neutral distribution of the price is log normal. And that is, you can start this way. So. What I'm saying is that if you start with FQ instead of FP, you will be able to establish an equilibrium uh, without worrying for a fixed point. So let me now describe how you can construct the equilibrium. Okay, so the idea is that under the risk neutral measure, Y needs to be a martingale, P needs to be a martingale. And then if you have FQ, which is given, right, the risk neutral density of prices. Well, the ideas that I explained a couple of minutes ago, in terms of pricing by transport maps and heat equation, you can do the same thing. This is where you, I mean, because you are under risk neutral measure, you know all the distributions, okay? You know the distribution of volumes and you will also know the distribution because we, I mean, we postulate that we know the distribution of uh, price. And so you can price by transport map again with the same heat equation, nothing changes there. And then since we are starting with Q, you wanna define P, and what you want to do is now you want to reverse engineer everything and you want to define P using the postulated form of the stochastic discount factor. Okay, and this is something that you can do. And it is essentially for people who know quadratic BSD, it will be equivalent to solving a quadratic BSD. We will see that in equilibrium, this inconspicuous trading uh, property is not satisfied. The inside, the market maker will predict some part of the trading of the insider. Okay, so now let's give me the whole recipe to construct the equilibrium. So you have FQ given, you have FQ given. You have the transport map, which is given. So it is transport map is here, potentials and maps are here. It is also here. Sigma is the correlation structure of the noise trading. Solve this PD, which is equivalent, in fact, of solving a quadratic BSD, whose final condition is here. Okay, and then consider this forward SD. Okay, everything is, I'm, I'm giving a recipe step by step. Consider this forward SD, take its, uh, uh, take its transition densities, solve the focal plank associated with. And then the physical distribution of price has to be this. So you can say that this push forward measure has to be the, uh, the physical distribution of, uh, of the price, of the fundamental price. And now you can go back. So uh, you started with FQ, I give you a recipe to construct FP. Well, if you were to start with this FP, equilibrium works. So that is the idea. And so this is the theorem. So assume that you start with this FP that I described, then there exists an equilibrium where risk neutral distribution of the fundamental price is FQ. And then the pricing rule that I described that is given by transport maps and heat, heat equation is, I mean, is the equilibrium pricing rule. And then in, uh, in equilibrium, I mean, uh, the trading strategy of the insider is this one. And this one, this is, I mean, it might be ugly for many people, but this is Dubs H transform, transform for people who know it. There is a predictable part essentially of this, which everybody knows. And then there is a hidden part, if you want to think about this way, that allows the insider to create a bridge. But this, it is not a Brownian bridge, it is a general Markov bridge. So in equilibrium under P, okay, uh, and Fy, uh, the so conditional to its filtration, Y will not be a Brownian motion under anymore. So there is a uh, there is a market price of risk which is here. Okay, 
uh, this is a Brownian motion under PFY. Okay, so in equilibrium under the risk under the physical measure, uh, things are not material. And then, uh, but in equilibrium uh, under the risk neutral measure, I mean, prices are martingale, and Y is martingale, and the heat equation is uh, with the transport map is what goes between the two. Okay. Uh, so that is it. So let me explain some qualitative properties of this equilibrium. So compared to the risk neutral case that I mentioned, when the market maker is risk averse, the pricing rule is still computed via the heat equation and the transport map. But the transport map between the risk neutral quantities, not physical quantities. Okay. Risk aversion of market maker does not change this recipe, but it changes the distribution of trading volumes and the distribution of prices. Okay. The transition between the risk physical and the risk neutral distribution, which is the market price of risk, is fully characterized by this function phi, which comes from the quadratic BSD. Market maker's inventory risk is the main factor driving the risk premium. Okay. So similar to uh, inventory risk-based models, both prices and positions mean revert uh, under the physical measure. And one thing that I will come back to. Uh, in a couple of minutes. The quoted price, which is the risk neutral expectation, will be below the physical expectation if the market maker has positive inventory. So in fact, if market maker has positive inventory, the prices will be increasing under the physical measure. Okay. So I will explain why this happens. There is also one thing which is important, which is that which comes back to this excess volatility in markets. What happens is that the uh, so there is fun physical quantity, which is the physical variance of V, fundamental price. Physical variance of, because of mean reversion, physical variance of fundamental price will be less than the risk neutral variance of the fundamental price. Therefore, when you will be quoting options, you know, computing IVs, you will need to take into account the fact that under risk neutral things have more volatility. So there is some excess volatility that appears because of mean reversion. Okay. So I want to go back to some examples. I want to do, I started with uh, this uh, option, right? Or stock and option. I want to go back to two stocks uh, where the distribution of the two, joint distribution of two stocks, though, I mean, fundamental value of the two stocks is Gaussian. Why Gaussian? Because in the Gaussian case, as we draw a straight line here, the maps are linear maps. Okay, so transport optimal transport map between Gaussian distributions are linear maps. Okay, uh, in, in this case, by linearity of the final condition, since, since the final condition of the PDE is a linear uh, final condition, uh, the pricing rule is linear on the state. Uh, the price will be like this. Uh, and also in the Gaussian case, since everything is linear, we can compute everything explicitly. We can now start from P. If I give you the P distribution of assets, you can construct it. And then I will also give you a initial inventory to the market maker. So if this uh, beta is the initial inventory of the market maker. Okay, so if I start from physical distribution of assets and an initial endowment for the market maker, then there is an equilibrium where the risk neutral distribution of the fundamental price, it is explicit. I mean, you can write all those quantities. Okay, so it is, uh, you can write the mean and you can write the uh, covariance matrix. And the equilibrium strategy and the pricing rule are given uh, as linear maps. Okay, in equilibrium, the physical dynamics of Y are mean reverting. So you have a, a symmetric matrix A. In fact, uh, sigma minus one times uh, Y is mean reverting. This is very easy when you look at here. And then you have these matrices. This SQ is the uh, risk neutral covariance. Lambda is the price impact matrix, which is the classical Chi's lambda in multi-dimension. And AT, they will all be increasing in risk aversion. So this is because we started with risk uh, physical distribution as given. The physical distributions are given, the pricing rule will depend on, on alpha, on risk aversion. But if you start from the risk neutral distribution, fixed risk neutral distribution, 
then pricing rule do not depend on asking. Okay, so let me go back to this formula, this expression of means here. And I wanna explain what is happening here. Uh, so what I want, risk premium has the same sign as the market maker's inventory. Okay, put yourself in one dimension. The price is the risk not to expectation of the final price. Because of the formula that I give, it is also equal to physical expectation minus this quantity. If beta is positive, this physical expectation has to be bigger than the risk not to expectation. Okay, so what's happening here? So if, in, if the market maker has some inventory, positive inventory, uh, he wants to unload some of his position. And in equilibrium, somehow they both agree that the insider will give a positive drift, predictable part for the, I mean, the, a part of his drift will be positive. And then the market maker will accept the quote, a price which is still increasing too. So he will not cut down. Uh, so he will accept that the price will go up okay, because there's a positive drift. So in equilibrium, they will both agree that the dispositive drift in both Y and, uh, y and P will exist because it will be advantageous for both of them in terms of risk sharing, okay? What, uh, also some other qualitative properties. So if, if risk aversion is larger, the market maker is trading way more aggressively. So price impact matrix, the matrix are larger. So the uh, price impact matrix are larger means that the market maker will adjust the, the price faster and more. And more aggressively. Uh, there will be larger uninformed trader loss. So uninformed traders in the, all these models lose money. Uh, they will lose more if the market maker is more risk averse. And there will be a bigger, uh, larger mean reversion speed of the position of the market maker. As I mentioned, there is an order in terms of uh, uh, realized uh, covariances and realized variances of uh, prices fundamental prices. So the physical variance is less than the risk total variance because of the mean reversion. And one more last thing that I wanna say, because of the way we describe the pricing rule, okay? If the data of the problem were to be given, if you were to go to the market, if you were getting the risk neutral distribution from the option prices, right? Then the risk aversion does not impact the pricing rule. Okay, the market maker could be risk averse. If you are, the more market-based approach, uh, the pricing rule is not impacted by the risk aversion. The distribution of the prices and volumes will change, but not the, not the rules, not the dependence between Y and P, say this way. So I wanna go back to the, the, the transport problem. Now I will go back to the case where there is one stock and one option, okay? So I, I have, again, my Gaussian distribution of volumes here, order imbalances. And I have this singular measure on R2, which is, which is supported on the payoff of the call option. And then I postulated the distribution of the spot price. Therefore, this joint distribution is fully described. Uh, so we need, in this case, I mean, you cannot compute it numerically. You can, in fact, since uh, Marcel is here, he knows optimal transport, you can cast it as a multi to one dimensional optimal transport, but it doesn't help. So it is, it's basically, I had a small discussion with Brandon Pass about this. It seems that uh, yeah, the best way is again, to compute the whole transport map. There is no way of uh, uh, being able to say more. Uh, it is a difficult problem, but it exists. So the map exists. There are numerical methods to compute this. But so the map is not only like this, it is also like this. So I wanna explain what this means. So as I said, there is this, what I can call at the money line in the imbalance space. So if orders end up here, the price will be at the money, the strike. If you are here, you go under here. If you are below here, you're gonna go in the money here. But there is complete lack of symmetry between what is happening here and here. So this upper left region, it is the region where market is generally buying calls. Okay, insider and noise trader are buying calls and selling stock. This is a bad situation for the market maker. This is an uncertain situation for the market maker because one of them is wrong. Okay, so 
uh, but uh, the market maker doesn't know whether people who are selling uh, stocks or people who are buying uh, calls are wrong. Okay. But, and then, be, and this will generate a huge discontinuity of the transport map along this line. Basically, if you are slightly under this 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 uh, at the money line, you will be way out of the uh, way way out of the, the option will be way out of the money. If you are a little bit above the line, the option will be way in the money. This is the structure of the optimal transport map. You see this when you complete the map. But if you are here on the bottom right, well, even if some people are wrong, if you think about it, you are gonna end up close to the strike. So there is less variance of the price if you are in this region. Okay, and so in fact, optimal transport map codes this lack of asymmetry and codes this lack of asymmetry between this region and this region, and this uh, this will bring us uh, some uh, properties in, in terms of IVs. Okay, so let me so we, we computed this stuff numerically, and we can discuss about how to compute them or, and how to not to compute them, and we computed all those quantities, and then I am plotting you. What is happening in terms of those function phi and h that I mentioned, the heat equation and the quadratic BSD, we solve them. And so we are, I'm plotting everything at time t equal to one half, capital T is equal to one. Okay, so these are pricing rules, derivative of pricing rules, we ask uh, revenues of the market maker at time one half and IVs, uh, everything you can compute. Okay, so a couple of qualitative properties, option lambda are larger than stock lambda. So the price impact is larger on options markets. This is something very well known or feature of the markets. Uh, option markets are less liquid than stock markets. There is one thing that's happening because of, because of this structure, right? Because of this structure, in fact, if you are here in out of the money region, option is not informative, okay? People who are trading options are for sure noise traders. If you are very close to the maturity and if you are somewhere here, right? Only noise trader could be trading uh, option because option will be out of the money almost surely. So at the end of the time, the transport map here only depends on the volume in stock. And the transport map here depends on the sum of the YS and YO. This feature is in fact reflected at the, if, I mean, you are essentially solving a heat equation whose final condition is this property. You will have this type of properties and it will get more and more pronounced when you get close to the time. So. The option price, uh, the stock prices will de de depend more on stock order here and on the sum of the stock and option here. This is the second property. And as I mentioned, because of the discontinuity of the transport map on the top left corner is significantly strong, larger than the discontinuity on the bottom right. The IV, for example, is higher here on the top left corner. So the market makers will be charging more for options on top left side. And they will be charged, BDASK revenue is what BDASK revenue is what they charge to the market noise trader, in fact. And they will be charging more to noise trader when essentially you are on top left corner here. Okay, so it is a risk, riskier region for the market maker. And because they need to take profits for the risk that they are taking, uh, implied vol will be higher on top left corner compared to right bottom right corner. And in fact, if you saw all the PDs that I mentioned, you will see that stock premium is higher on top left corner. Okay, these two, they will have a correlation, which is something that we are obtaining. IV has a predictive uh, power on the stock premium. That is uh, an empirical consequence of the model. And it is, uh, there are some empirical evidences for this. So let me do a summary. Uh, I think I'm a couple of minutes ahead of time. Uh, so we provide a novel method methodology to find equilibrium in financial markets with long-lived asymmetric information based on optimal transport. In order to be able to construct the equilibrium, we postulate that the pricing rule at maturity is a Brownian map, pushing the distribution of volumes at maturity to the, to the belief of the market maker. And then we basically rest this simple stochastic analysis. And if the market maker is risk averse, you should construct this equilibrium rule, equilibrium pricing rule, by considering risk neutral quantities instead of physical quantities. And also the model exhibits dependence between risk premia, volumes and prices and implied volatilities that have empirical implications. Okay, so that's it for me. 
Thank you very much. Uh, I put some couple of papers. So this is 1992 paper uh, by Kerry. This is 93 paper. We have a paper with Shreya, my student, uh, who's an extension of it. We have other works uh, with Gordon, for example, on some other extensions of this. And these are the paper of Umut uh, and also the paper of Colin Dufresne and Foss. And yeah, the book of uh, Galichon, who mentions many applications of optimal transport and the paper of Kyle, of course. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ibrahim. Uh, we have time for questions, comments. Maybe I can go first. Um, when you were when you were still explaining the risk neutral uh, in the beginning, uh, can you can you repeat what's the role of the? So you have a basically a two D to one D transport map. Yeah. Except that the, yeah, the one D is embedded. So the the inverse of this, I guess, the coupling uh, in that direction, it later it's one of the quantities right so can you can you comment on the role of what what does this randomization mean in terms so, of the model yeah i mean basically what the mark so what the market what the insider will do is to take the price that he learned at the beginning of time and map it to a final value of white so you basically create a bridge that will bring y to a final value. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that since this gamma is not invertible, right? There is a, your v is here. There's a huge level set here. I mean, there's a level set essentially where uh, any y in this level set will go to the same price. But what he will be doing is we'll take v and he will randomize in this set, within this set so that unconditionally, meaning from the perspective of the market maker, this final value of yt should be Gaussian. So basically we need to introduce another mixing random variable as you are saying, to generate the coupling between uh, v and yt. Uh, we are gonna be using a little bit of randomization to say that, okay, there is a level set for all v, there is a level set here. And then he will randomize among these level, level sets in a way so that when the market maker looks at all these randomizations, he will just see a Gaussian distribution here. Okay, so th this is just the lack of invertibility of the transport map, which is a particular case of uh, uh, the lack of invertibility of the, I mean, it's, lack of, it's not regular, I, mean, I can't say it is, it is what it is. You are on a one dimensional subset here, so it's not gonna be invertible, but you can get, a, get around here. Right? So you, basically he needs to choose this object as a random variable, which provides in fact optimal coupling in the sense that you're mentioning. And it can be done very easily. Cool, thanks. Um, are there more questions? Yeah, I have a question. Go ahead. So, yeah. So here uh, you are assuming at time zero, you observe the VTO, which is a value at a capital T. Yeah. So is it possible that the VTO VTO is actually a process and you, your information is a dynamic? I mean. So, I mean, there are papers on dynamic information. Indeed, uh -huh. uh, Kerry has a paper probably from the end of nineties or beginning of 2000. And Umut actually what he did uh, in 2010 in a round is the case of dynamic information. Okay. Uh, and so now I, I basically see a way of, uh, there is a way of handling that too, with optimal transport. Uh, it will not- so that involve the, the Maringo optimal Maringo transport? No, or? no, I mean, no? so the, 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 I mean, the thing is Martingale optimal transport, the Martingale the constraint comes from the fact, fact that you go from prices to prices, right? So I mean, prices at one time to prices at another time, which generates uh, linear constraints on the transport maps, transport uh, couplings. Uh, so here you will always go from volume to prices and there is no reason in, uh, that endogenously you have some constraints of this type. It will not be marking uh, optimal transport. The thing that will change is the way, if you, is the way you generate the bridge, okay. which, is ex which is exactly what Umut did in fact. Okay, thank you. Okay, there are questions, I think. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Any further questions? Thank you, Ibrahim, again. I'm going to hand back to Igor then. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Marcel. Thank you, Ibrahim. So I think the, the official part, to the, the recording part will end here, but we'll still be around for whatever time needed to, to you know, have more maybe informal discussion with the speaker. Um, so I'll stop recording. <laughs>